Hey y'all, welcome back to Andy's Little Homestead. Today, we've got a whole bunch of logs that we gotta move. We're gonna do it with the old grapple. See, most of the logs that I run on a sawmill come from tree services because a lot of times, especially when they get stuff like pine, they can't sell it. They can't get sold to a mill because they only buy pine by like the truckload. They can't sell it for firewood. And that means a lot of times they gotta pay to get rid of them. So my buddy Dakota called me the other day. He said, hey man, I got 22 pine trees, you want them? I said, it was a frog's that water watertight? Hell yeah, I want them. Where they dropped them off is kind of in a tight spot, so this is gonna be the best machine to get it out of there. Now, of course, I can't do anything with any of my equipment without first fixing it. And in this case, I had a boat fuel tank that was supplying this. I was also using it for the SkyTrack, but I got rid of the SkyTrack and the fuel tank was on it when I did that. So, so we gotta make something else happen with this. When I bought this thing, it came with this fuel tank and saw it looks like come off a lawnmower or something. But it wasn't attached to it. I don't know if there's anything wrong with it, but uh, we're gonna hook it up and see what happens. Now this came with a, a little fuel ball hooked up to it, which is basically a very rudimentary fuel filter. All it is, just a glass bowl that sits on the bottom and gravity brings heavy stuff down to the bottom there. Doesn't look like it's seen any good fuel in quite a few years. That's, that's nothing but varnish. But the gasket seems to be intact. I don't know, man. If we put fuel in this, it might work out. So this is just a standard outboard motor uh, fuel line. It's got a primer bulb in it that'll allow you to actually pull a siphon without having to stick your mouth on it, drink gasoline. Y'all seen me do that before. But this one came with a quick connect and it's got a, another fitting for it that uh, I guess is supposed to go on the tank side. We're gonna delete that because I already got my fuel bowl and everything right here. And it doesn't look like Preds line up anyway. I know why they abandoned this tank. I figured it out. You see the pickup on the tank is down here and the carburetor is up here. See the siphon on this is only gonna work if the fuel tank location is higher than the final outlet of the hose. As soon as that hose gets up above where whatever the level of the fuel is, it won't push it out. This engine has its own mechanical fuel pump built in, but we've completely bypassed it because we broke the fitting off it right there. And why they decided to go with some stupid custom knobby plastic BS, I don't really know, but it ain't gonna work for us. I believe I've got another outboard tank that we can make work with this though. Well, I was wrong, been wrong before, it happens. That's okay, I came up with a less elegant, but effective solution. It ain't like I'm running it while it's, you know, moving, so that's fine. I, uh, I forgot to put the feet up. They gotta, they gotta go up. That's better. All right, well, she made it up here. I did leave that gas tank on top of there. It didn't bounce out, so that's good. It did splash everywhere, but nothing's on fire, so so we're in good shape. Before I start working on those logs, I got one log that's coming to me. Buddy Mike's got a cherry log that he wants to get taken care of, so. My biggest criticism of this machine is the fact that it's set up like a wagon, so it doesn't back up well at all. It's actually quite difficult, so. The flip side of that is that I can pick up stuff in a lot tighter spots, which is what we're doing today. Also, while I was running up here, the tractor clutch started slipping again, so that's pretty cool, you know. While we're waiting on Mike, I reckon we'll break open this clutch. So there was an incident. Um, as it turns out, the single tack well that was holding the hydraulic tank onto there, it failed, it's wild, and uh, spilled some hydraulic fluid on the ground. We're gonna get some sawdust over it and I'm done. I'm not doing it anymore today. We're gonna just come back and try it tomorrow. You gotta know when to hold them. Gotta know when to fold them. 
You got no when to hold them. No when to fold them. No when to walk away. No when to run. You never count your money. While you're sitting at the table, there'll be time enough for counting when the dealing's done. Dang song's been in my head all night. I bet you're wondering what's on my head. I got these dang earmuffs that, that play music it's called 3M work tunes. They're awesome. Listening to Gangster Rat while stacking logs is a good time. It's a good day, man. I'm happy with how today's starting off. So I did almost make one mistake. That's the cherry log Mike gave me and I almost buried it, but I didn't. So that's good, because I gotta get that taken care of fairly soon. So we're gonna pick that back up, we'll drop it off on the bunks and just load the rest of this out. But I reckon y'all have seen me play with my wood enough, uh, so we'll just do it this way. There we go. So just in this stack alone, I've got another stack up the hill. We've got about 80 logs. So we got a little over a hundred in total. That's gonna come out to, at a minimum, 2,000 board feet. I left the last load on the grapple because uh, I can just hook it back up and run it back up and put them on the bunks when they're ready to go there's no point in unloading them on a complete unrelated note i might have jackknifed it um but no we're leaving it here for convenience that's that's the reason you know when i got the grapple i, I really thought i was going to use it more and i found out that it does in fact have limitations one is backing up two would be the amount of hydraulic leaks i knew it leaked just not quite how much but yesterday and today i was in a pinch and this got me out of it i did end up getting the clutch on the tractor dialed in so it's it's good to go again and we're in good shape quite a few logs later honestly sometimes the best thing you can do for your own productivity is just just take a nap just just go to sleep and you wake up and try again worked out well this time now these logs aren't my ideal i, I really prefer 12 inches and above because come on now I really prefer 12 inches and above because uh, I can get an 8x8 out of it, uh, which means I can get 1x8s, I can get 2x8s, 2x4s, 4x4s, whatever. It's just kind of the 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 best like lower end of it. Anything lower than that doesn't really work out, but because he gave me so much of them, I was willing to be like, yeah, I could go down to 9. Some of his guys may have real high aspirations of what 9 inches looks like, but I'm not complaining, man. They were free. They could just same be fence posts. Doesn't make a difference to me. Before I go, I'd like to dedicate this video to two people, actually. One would be uh, Daryl Snyder and, and his family up in Canada. Daryl passed away not too long ago. And, and um, he basically did the, the same kind of thing I did, you know, small-time farmer, homesteader, just kind of making it work with what he had. And from what I hear, he was a good man. And the second one would be Phyllis Cook. Unfortunately, Phyllis passed away pretty recently here, too. Her, her son, Rob, reached out to me, and uh, apparently they both like to watch my videos together and she'd send him messages like, did you see what Andy's doing? I uh, man that, wow. Uh, that's something. It's an unfortunate thing, but it's a, it's a fate that's coming for all of us. So I reckon the best thing to do is try and make it count. So to the families of Phyllis and Daryl, uh, I hope y'all enjoyed and everybody else. I hope y'all learned something. I love you. God bless. No. No, it's allergies. Bug got in my eye. Exhaust. Sawdust. No. No, we're good.